Hey guys, this is Kenjido and welcome to another MakeShot Pro video. Today I'm going to be covering a digital painting technique that allows you to paint in restricted areas so that you can kind of do more complex coloring but without having to worry about staying within the lines. It's a little bit hard to explain, but I'm going to be covering three different methods of doing this, and once I start going through them, it'll be really clear what it is that I'm trying to achieve. So let's get to it. So for this first set of examples, I'm going to use a vector object circle as the object that I'm going to be painting on and wanting to restrict my painting to. Then I'm going to show those same methods um, with the line art example so we can see what are the pros and cons of the three different methods and when you may or may not want to use them. So starting with the first method, we're going to go with just straight selection. So if I use the magic wand, for example, and I have the match mode set to opacity, what I have is a vector object. And if I remove the background, you'll see that the only part that's not transparent is the circle itself. So what I can do now is select that circle if I have the vector object selected, I can select that circle and we can see that a selection is created that matches that non-opaque or that opaque area. Now what I can do is create a new raster layer with that selection still available. And now if I grab a paintbrush and start to paint around, what we'll see is that even though I'm painting well beyond the bounds of the circle, the paint effect is restricted to just the region within the selection. And we can create as many new layers as we like as long as we have that selection enabled or active. And we can paint uh, different colors, different lighting effects, whatever you're trying to do, and it'll all stay within that selection as long as that selection is enabled. Now for the second method, we're still going to use the magic wand and we're still going to create a selection. But instead of trying to preserve that selection and work with it, what we're going to do is go to mask and do show selection. And what that's going to do is create a mask where you can see black is going to make whatever's below it transparent and white is going to allow it to pass through. So even if I disable the selection now, and underneath the mask, I create a new raster layer. And once again, start painting. I have the same effect of restricting that paintbrush effect in just the region that is masked in this case. And what's nice about this is that I no longer have to worry about the selection. And if I add a new layer underneath there, again, same effect. If I pick another color, the, the painting is going to be restricted to just the region that the mask allows through. Now for the final method, um, this version, we have to actually convert the vector object into a raster layer. And it also requires that this region here be transparent, whereas before, as long as the selection can isolate the region you want, um, the selection or the mask will work. But in this case, this method where we're going to use the lock transparency, this will only work if it's transparent. So just by clicking on this, I can now use the paintbrush once again, as we've shown so many times before, and same effect as all the others. Now when I paint, it's only going to affect the regions that are not transparent. This, however, though, means your vector object is gone and because you've converted it to a raster layer and you have to have transparency around it for it to work. And as soon as you turn off lock transparency, if you were to paint, then you lose that effect. You start painting everywhere instead. Okay, so that's an example with vector objects. Now let's take a look at a line art example. So here's a simple line art that I created using the pen tool. Um, it has an enclosed region, it has non-enclosed regions, and we're just going to walk through those same examples to see how would you do it in this particular case rather than having a vector object. So um, from a, a selection point of view, 
As long as you can select this region here, whether by opacity, because of the fact that there's, um, you know, nothing, there's nothing in that space, nothing fills it, uh, the magic wand would work, and it'll find the middle of that as long as you're uncontiguous. If you're in discontiguous, it's going to select everything. But if we just want this region in here, for example, we can just select that region. And like we've seen before, create a new layer, and then we can brush and affect only that region inside. Equivalently, if we create a mask and do the same thing, show selection, and then create an, add a new raster layer underneath the mask, we can get rid of the selection. And if we want our vector line object, since it's underneath the mask, it's actually being hidden since our mask only covers the region inside the line art, we can move it outside of that group and then we'll see it again. So then now we have our raster layer here. We can bring up our brush once again and see same effect. You'll notice when doing this that because of the non-accuracy of the selection that right around the edge you'll get sort of a haloing effect. This can be mitigated if you just expand your selection maybe by like one pixel. And then in that case, it'll fall behind the line art rather than having that point of separation. Now, finally, in the last case, if I were to take the most basic example of just converting this to a raster layer and then trying to do lock transparency, we'll see that it doesn't work because the transparency is everything except the line. And so given what we were trying to do, if I do lock transparency on the line art, then the line is the only thing that I'm going to color. Now, there may be a case where that's what you want to do and that works out great. Um, and this can do what you want. But if you're trying to paint the middle here with line art, it's not really going to work to do lock transparency. You'd first have to fill in this region with a color and on that raster layer, then do lock transparency, and then you could paint more on top of it. So now if we look at the three different methods, we saw that you know some work better or you know not as well for line art versus vector objects. Um, but in general, um, there's also different other qualities about them, right? Like, so on the left, if we consider different qualities, like how, how fast it is to work with that method, how easy it is if you have to change the shape, like the reference of what it is you're trying to paint and then remodify, or how easy it is to keep adding layers or whatnot and, or coming back to and modifying layers underneath, um, you know, whatever object it is you're working on that, from my own experience, um, lock transparency is the least flexible, but it allows you to move the fastest. You're not adding new layers, you're not messing with selections, you're not worrying about creating masks and managing all that, you're just clicking one button and then you're painting over it, but you're painting over whatever your reference is. For selections, I think selections allows you, if you have our, if you're constantly tweaking and changing the reference shape that you're wanting to paint over, selection is the fastest just because you can tweak your vector object, for example, or your line art from your pen, and then create a new selection and then just paint over that on your raster layers. Whereas with masks, it takes a little bit more to having to keep redoing your mask to, you know, match the slight modification that you're making. However, with masks, you can make changes to all those different raster layers that you've created without ever having to reselect. You know, like if you're if you're working on one and you had your selection, you created all your layers, and then you're good and you move on. If you ever come back and want to modify that one piece you had a selection on, you have to make sure you reselect that, then find the raster layer that you were working on, and then work with it. It's a little bit more cumbersome. So this table just shows my experience of what I feel like are the pros and cons of the different approaches. Um, honestly, I think it's really just going to come down to you figuring out which one works best for you and your workflow and just getting proficient with that. So that's it. Note there's, there's many methods of being able to do digital painting in PaintShop Pro. This is just one specific method that's often found uh, or used in other applications like Corel Draw or Autodesk Sketchbook or those kinds of software. Um, but this particular method is pretty good at being able to add like shading and doing, you know, creating like 3D effects um, in specific uh, geometry. 
I have a time lapse video that I recently created where I used the selection method with vector objects as my reference to create a uh, Larry the Cucumber, who's a, who's a children's video uh, character. And in that method, um, I just used a standard paintbrush. I didn't, I didn't use anything else. It was just the, the circle with different levels of hardness and different colors. So if you want to see this in action at high speed, uh, check that out. Otherwise, if you have any questions or would like to suggest content, feel free to leave a comment. And if you'd like to get updates on new content, feel free to subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.